Welcome to another episode of Beers With. We are uh, hanging out here in Denver at the CBC. This is Destination Beer, and I am with Fred Bultman from New Holland Brewing. Fred, how's it going today? Going great, thank you. End of a great week. It, it really is. It's Friday of uh, the week of CBC, and uh, there has been a lot of great stuff going on. Uh, we've had tons of great seminars, great beer events, just so many awesome people walking around. I mean, it's an industry event, so you, you get to see friends and colleagues that you've worked with and learned from, and it's just an amazing time to be around you know, this, these kind of people. Yeah, I'm immensely proud. I mean, not only do I take personal enjoyment and, and I get a ton of inspiration and motivation from from my friends in this industry, but I'm also immensely proud that um, what the rest of the world would expect to be, uh, you know, brutal competitors are instead friends and colleagues. We share information. We want to, we want to see the world uh, improve in terms of beer, and, and we all work towards towards raising expectations. And I think that uh, it's one of the things that makes a week like this emotional because we we get to see our community grow and strengthen. And uh, it's the real deal. It's people yeah. who care and, and people who are ready to change the world uh, yeah. with craft beer. And we, we heard a lot of that happening, you know, with the general session, talking about the growth of craft beer in America. And not, well, not just in America, but, uh, you know, up to an 8% market share. And, you know, obviously you guys are a big part of that uh, with what you're doing in uh, Michigan um, and your expansion. Talk a little bit about who you guys are and what you're doing up there. Well, uh, so we're New Holland Brewing Company, and we have a number of brands. We have a, a wide and balanced portfolio. Uh, the beer that gets the most recognition nationally is Dragon's Milk, a bourbon barrel stout. It's really well composed, uh, interesting beer. It's changed the footprint of our brewery and what we do. It used to be a little specialty one-off beer, and and now we're doing, um, you know, we'll we'll start shipping about 800 barrels a month here next month, and uh, so we'll do somewhere between six and eight thousand barrels of Dragon's Milk in a year. And while those are impressive numbers, I, what I like more about it is what it says about the craft palate. And, and, and it's become an everyday beer. It's become something that people uh, savor. And, and just um, it doesn't have to be a special occasion to have a nice, uh, warm, complex uh, beer. Yeah. And um, so we've watched people change. We really uh, treasure the customer's experience more than anything. There's a lot of numbers in this business. And we do have to forecast and we do have to grow. And we have to be a healthy company but uh, we have um i think a one way to describe us would be with this message campaign that we've started which is called stop and taste and so we really pledge to hold space for the customer to just enjoy a beer and we encourage them to set down some of the distractions and get away from the digital age for a minute and uh and just you know beer is about connecting to people and about sharing things with your friends and and uh and savoring flavor and so we really pledge to, to continue to make that part of people's experience with our brand and people's experience with craft. And I think that's um, it's something that's incredible right now is that uh, craft offers people, I think, uh, an opportunity to even enrich their life if that's not too heady, you know? No, it's not heady at all, and that's very much we're about. We're, we love, I like that stop and taste, you know. Enjoy the beer that you have in front of you. Enjoy the, the food, the slow-cooked food in yeah. front of you. And we're also, we, we do travel, and, and you, you know, I know Holland has, you know, an, the whole area that you're in, Michigan's got a lot of opportunities to travel and visit. Talk about, you know, Holland and, and what people can go visit up there. So we're on the shore of Lake Michigan, um, tremendous great lake, and, and on the whole uh, west side of Michigan, on the eastern shore of Lake Michigan, it's, uh, it's very undeveloped. There's beautiful sandy beaches. There's lots of state parks. Uh, we are a very outdoorsy state, uh, so people can come. And there's lots of small towns to visit. There's lots of places to get in the great outdoors. Um, and uh, on top of that, there's lots of breweries and distilleries to check out. So uh, we have over 150 brewers in our state. Uh, we have a strong Michigan Brewers Guild. There's a lot of... Uh, uh, love between us and uh, we love to see people come and travel the state and make little uh, trips and tours between bre between breweries yeah. we even have a number of breweries up in the upper peninsula which is you know at least 10 hours away from us at its farthest point and uh, what's remarkable to me is across our, our big state you're never more than an hour away from a brewery nice. that's pretty cool that's extremely cool now Another passion that you and I both share is a love for good food, for mm -hmm. cooking, and you've just written a cookbook. 
Yeah. Uh, called the, uh, well, why don't you tell us about it? It's the Beervangelist Guide to the Galaxy. And uh, so what it is is it's, it's part cookbook. It's also a pairing guide. So I talk about the art of pairing in a number of ways and kind of some of the essentials of understanding beer flavor and how that relates to pairing to food. Um, and it's also a, uh, um, a call to seasonal eating and drinking. So there's a lot of essays on how to connect to your food and your sourcing. And, and I really, it's, it's when it became the book I had to write instead of the book I wanted to write was when I, when I linked my passion for beer and teaching people about how to understand flavor to a changing lifestyle of, of connected food and drink overall and saying, well, really, pairing doesn't live in a vacuum. Uh, one of the best ways to pair is to start by thinking about what we're going to eat, what time of year is it, what's fresh, yeah. what's going on, because the best chefs, the best cooks in the world are more curators than designers. Absolutely. We're, they're, they're, they're finding the best ingredient and they're finding a way to showcase it in its best light. Yeah. So if we think seasonally and we connect to our food and we, when we do a better job sourcing and finding the very best ingredients, then that sets up the next stage of, now what beer would I like with that? So the book is laid out seasonally. Um, it's got a little over uh, 30 recipes in it and um, lots of different things, including like an invitation to learn about what community-supported agriculture looks like and what you can learn at the farmer's market. And I always think whether it's craft beer or seasonal food or whatever lifestyle you want to call it, the craft lifestyle, I think it's very important to keep inviting people in and making it easy. Yeah. There's some essays on hosting and entertaining and it's my opinion, the ultimate host makes it feel easy. And that's what we need to do as, as more and more people come. You know, we're at 8% of the market share now. I believe we're changing the world. There's no end to that. I don't believe that it's a bubble. Yeah, uh, oh yeah. A bubble is about something that's growing past its ability to sustain. Yeah. And I believe we're growing rootstock. And yeah. there's no limit. Nobody asks how, how deep roots can go. Yeah. And so um, I think that it's important that we continue to connect and allow the next wave of people um, for everybody to come in and have this be an enjoyable experience. And um, that's what the book's all about. So it goes back and forth between, I call it a philosophy of food and drink. And I uh, hope people get a chance to enjoy it. They can find it on our website as well as Amazon. And uh, I'm having a lot of fun taking it around to shows and dinners and, and talking with people about what beer and food means to them. Well, and you see a lot of that, especially in the craft beer movement with, you know, craft being what it is and, and people trying to source pure ingredients and getting the most out of those ingredients. And, uh, and I think that's what's making, you know, our industry so good is that we are doing it the right way with the roots. Um, and people, I think you're right. You, you know, what do they say? You, you never meet somebody that, uh, that, that, that has a craft beer and then goes back to American Light Lagers. Right. Nobody turns their back. Once you've had that kind of a flavor, you can't, you can't look backwards. So one of the things, we, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about one aspect of your beer evangelism, uh, and that was uh, right at the Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, so Super Bowl Sunday, everybody's all interested in the commercials, and um, everybody's really digging in. And then Chrysler shows an ad, and they say, let us make your cars, let Germany make your beers. Yeah. And um, you, you're, 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 you're rather known for uh, your um, forthrightness. <laughs> And uh, you didn't hesitate on this one. T talk about this. No, so I remember I was watching the ad, and Bob Dylan's on it. It's kind of this cool American pride sort of deal. And then uh, before the words came on about the beer, they, there was this brew house shot. And I remember this, like, like alert in the back of my neck. I was like, what <laughs> it, what's that doing in this ad? And then it said uh, something along the lines of, let Germany make your beer, let Switzerland make your watch, and let Asia assemble your phone, and we'll make your cars. And I just thought, you know, at first it was kind of like, just didn't sit right. And I was like, you know, screw you. You know, we've got plenty of, we're the, I think the most innovative and exciting beer market in the universe right now. Right, and so it just seemed inaccurate at, the, at least. And then as I, I uh, went back and viewed it again and actually wrote down the entire transcript of the commercial and I, I found it to be more offensive uh, and, and I took exception to it and I decided I wanted to call them out. So I wrote an open letter to Chrysler, I sent it to them as well, and basically um, stated that, uh, you know, I think they owed the craft 
beer world, um, including you know everybody that makes makes up all the people, all the men and women that have dedicated themselves to make this industry an apology because they essentially dismissed it. Yeah. They're taking this position of American pride, and it becomes rhetoric if you're not honest about it. If you don't actually look around to your neighbors and say craftsmanship is everywhere. Yeah. I mean, they had an opportunity to say we're part of craftsmanship. We're making cars here we're doing this we love we support craftsmanship check out our neighbors too instead they they wanted to set themselves apart and they wanted to say our industry is where you should look for american made craftsmanship you may as well import these other things and um i didn't think i don't think they thought it through i don't think they recognize the artistry and craftsmanship we have here which i would argue is well beyond what the car industry is showing um, so anyways, I wrote an open letter, it got some traction online, and, and uh, it was a pretty engaging conversation. My, um, created some other uh, discussions, let's say, and I think uh, a few days later you saw uh, the, uh, I think it was the chairman of, of Chrysler getting asked about the backlash of their Super Bowl ad in some interview, and he had to, you know, of course he defended it and said, well, you know, people are talking about it, that's what we were going for. And so I had a little, a little grin that at least we were getting them on the spot. Yeah, and, and I think you, you make a great point, you know, not just in Michigan, but all over the United States. We see amazing craftsmanship, and that's demonstrated very well this week here in Denver with all of these amazing brewers here. And you know, we've got some people here that they work on a one-barrel system, and we've got some people here that are working on 120 or bigger barrel systems. And uh, great diversity, great beers. You guys are obviously a big part of that. So thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. Um, check it out. It's the Beer Evangelist's Guide to the Galaxy. You got it. And uh, great. Uh, I've looked at some of these recipes. You're definitely going to want to check these out. But definitely, if you're interested in learning more about food and pairings, and I like you know the seasonal aspect of it, definitely worth checking out. You can find it on Amazon and I guess on the New Holland website. Yeah, NewHollandBrew.com. Yep, New, NewHollandBrew.com. Thanks for joining us. Cheers. We will see you on the next one. Thanks. Appreciate it, sir.